So good morning. I wanted to uh, start off the new year with a message for you that hopefully will uh, be encouraging at the end. So New Year's. Um, if you were here last week, we, we talked about year-end inventory. And we talked about what does that look like. And inventory is the bloodline of the company, or cash flow, I should say, which inventory either chews up or contributes to that. If you have too much bad inventory in stock, you're going to suck up cash flow. And you're going to end up with uh, a deficit at the end of the year. Uh, so it's important to have good inventory. This week, I want to talk about something that is probably most of us have gotten on this track at some point in our lives, and maybe you did this year. I don't know. Talking about the gym. <laughs> the gym. Everybody gets the gym membership January 1st. Because why? What triggers that in our heads? I, I, I have yet to figure that out, but I think it has a lot to do with it's a new beginning. It's a new year. We have new things that we'd like to do. We have new goals that we'd like to achieve. Uh, here's a fact, uh, and this was written by somebody that had been in the fitness industry for 25 years. 90% of people that sign up in January stop going by March. 90%. And he talked about why. What is that? And so we have a gym right down the street. We actually have a membership. We've been a member there for I don't know how many years. It doesn't do any good in my pocket, my, my little membership card. I have to actually go in the building. That's like the first step. Um. But he talked about different things. Like some people go and they, they have the best of intentions to go because the they got new equipment there. And that equipment is going to make this work out a little better than other uh, other years past. They have a heated pool. If I can swim all year long, then I'm going to get the fitness that I need. They have, uh, you know, really great lighting and they have good music in the background, and they have television, so when I'm on the treadmill, I can actually watch the news, and now I'm multitasking, so that's like a big draw. Now you get two things done at the gym. You can get updated on the news, and you can get some exercise. When he, when he went through this list, he said, none of that works. It doesn't work. One of the things that he recognized that makes people continue to go is there's some sort of personal relationship established. There's some relationship that's established with either a trainer, a friend to go with you, uh, somebody at the gym that you see regularly and you talk to them and you, have a re you start to build a relationship with them. I have friends that I know they go because the trainer's there. If the trainer's not there, they're, not, they're probably not going to go or they won't be as motivated to go. There's something about that. There's, there's something about the accountability. You know, he, he also talked about not letting your workout get boring. If you've been to the gym or if you've done any type of exercise, the last thing you want to do is, is be doing the same thing. Let's say you're, you've got it set for three days a week, in three days a week, you're doing the same routine. It's probably going to die pretty soon because you're not mixing it up. The other thing that happens too is your muscles uh, get used to that. So they don't actually grow or your lung capacity. So you, it's, it's a stretching that needs to happen. The other statistic that he wrote down was uh, women, women tend to avoid weightlifting. They tend to focus a lot on cardio. What do you think men avoid? Cardio. And leg day. Leg day. Uh, <laughs> so you can see that there's, there's things that happen, uh, patterns. But he also said that do it for 21 days and it will become a habit. 
it'll become just part of who you become who you are what you do we all have our routines right when we wake up in the morning some of us have coffee i'm one of them amen for coffee some of us go to a quiet place some of us go to a computer we have a routine that's set i don't think anyone anything is better or worse than the other but we have our routines there are good routines healthy routines that we can get into but it takes 21 days to make that a habit i've also heard it said that it takes 21 days to break a habit and when we look at when we look at our christian walk if you have a relationship with jesus and you're walking that relationship out with jesus what does that look like? What are your habits for the new year? And you can apply a lot of that thinking about the gym to a Christian walk. Jesus sent out his disciples two by two. Sounds like a trainer and a going to the gym with somebody else. Um, you know, when you look at different things like women like to do cardio and not really so much on the weightlifting and believe me i'm not saying that this is a direct comparison but sometimes some of us doesn't matter male or female some of us spend time in the word but then when it comes to being outwardly driven to share the gospel or to to actually show the love of christ that kind of we pick and choose when that's going to happen. And so it's, we, can, we can go in one direction, but the point is to have a healthy body, you need both cardio and weights. That's what he's saying. And the same thing goes for our Christian walk. We need to be in the Word, but also sharing it. Both. So I want to look at a couple of scriptures today. And some of you know the scripture I'm going to pull up, because I was talking about the gym. First, First Timothy 4, 8. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. See, our bodies are dying, and that's what's happening. We know it, and we try to push that off as far as we can, and at some day we will get to that place and what we do here does matter for the next life in the spiritual life how we engage with other people matters <clears throat> what we do matters what we say matters how we view things matter but when we look at that but godliness so what is godliness and where do you get that from if we look at Second Peter, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his name, by, by his own glory and goodness. So he's called us. If you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, he's calling you. It's not a mistake. It's not a circumstance or a um, coincidence and I know for myself I looked at a lot of those things early on before I gave my life to Christ and I'm like geez that's kind of odd things would happen anyhow I don't want to get off track on them. but godliness what he's given it to us he's given it to us in his word if we study his word and we study the things that Jesus did it moves us into the godliness. Now there's a difference between being saved and godliness. We know that we're called into a relationship with Christ. And as we accept that, we are saved. That's, that's great news. It's for the next life. It's not all of it, though. There's, there, you're here for a reason. In 2019, God has a plan for your life. Maybe it is to go to the gym. 
That was the Holy Spirit speaking. No. Um, or maybe it's something else. What is it? What is God calling you to in 2019? See, there's a lot of things, though. <clears throat> Going to the gym takes so much discipline for a lot of people. There's very few people where it's just a natural thing. It may look natural, but they didn't get there naturally. It became a routine. And sometimes that's what we think. We see something, we say, wow, those people are really spiritual. Those people really know the word. Those people really believe the identity that Christ is calling them to. It took work to get that. They have to study the word. They have to stay in the word. Spiritual people say, stay close to God. And it flows through them. It's a continual dipping into the river. We're staying in the river, right? But it takes discipline. So he's given us everything we need. What has he given us? Well, first off, he's given us his son that went to the cross. Why? To save us from what? Our sin. Why? So we can have a relationship with God. We are reconciled back to the Father through his Son, who paid the ultimate price. He gives us hope. When we read the scripture and we, and we study the things that, that God says about us, his people, we see hope. There is a hope for the future. There is a hope for tomorrow. There is a hope in relationships that are broken. There is a hope for challenges in our life that they, they will be set aside, that God will help us with that. It takes discipline. Does it take discipline to keep praying the same thing over and over and over and over and over again? Yeah. The Bible says keep knocking. Keep asking. So it takes discipline. He gave us scripture that we can trust in. There are things in our lives sometimes that come down on us like bricks that just weigh us down, that we just drag knuckles. And that's not the life that God is calling us to. There's a life that God is calling us to in Christ that we are free. It doesn't mean they don't exist. It doesn't mean that those problems don't exist. What it means is that he is the one that we put those bricks and say, you take the bricks. I'm here. Show me what to do. I'm following you. And relief, give me some relief in this burden, whatever it is. And if you've been there, you know that's true. You know that something happens in your heart. When he lifts that burden, it it's not, sometimes it doesn't get completely taken away as far as the issue, but your heart is not heavy anymore. He's given us that. Those are godliness things that are moving around in us. We've, we've, we've nailed our stuff to the cross. We have hope for what's in front of us, and we have peace where we're at. But we've got to study the Word. We've got to read the Word. We've got to digest the Word. We have to consume the word because otherwise it's it's just like an entertainment show your spectator come in oh, that looks good this is good that's good i like that nope don't like that one right we hear a scripture and you go oh i don't like that one well sit it before the sit before the lord with it and say you know what god your word says this and i don't like it and I'm not going to do it. Okay, let me know how it works out. <laughs> you know, some of the, some of the characters, the, the people that we read in the Bible <clears throat> about discipline, imagine God calling you up or speaking to you in a dream, telling you to build an ark. We don't know how long it took. Scripture doesn't really tell us that. But there are some estimates, 100 years, you know, give or take. Can you imagine waking up every morning, going out there with your 
tool belt on with nails, building a boat when it's sunny outside and the forecast says no rain in the future every single day for like a hundred years. Like I couldn't do it for a week. That's a disciplined character. That's a, that's someone that knows God is calling me to do this. I don't know what that's going to look like, but all I know is that he wants me to do this and he's going to lead me to something. But then we've got another character that man after God's heart, disciplined for a long time. All of a sudden, one day he decides second Samuel, I think it's chapter 11. He says, where he decides when all kings go to battle, it's just the way it was. Every king went to battle. It was just known that if you're a king, you go to battle. He chose not to go to battle. What happened? He's looking out the window. Beautiful woman over there bathing on the roof. Train comes off the tracks. It's all downhill from there. He wasn't disciplined. Or he chose not to be disciplined in that time. He slipped up. It happens. And, it, and these characters are there. The stories are there for us to, I believe they're true. There's no doubt about that. They're also there to learn from. When you can take yourself and put yourself in his position, or you can take yourself and be a spectator as you're, as you're reading that scripture, you can see it and you can think about that. Okay, God, what does that, what does that even mean? Like, why am I, why am I reading about some guy building a boat? You know, what's in there? And we dig a little deeper and we study that. It takes discipline. You know, there's a couple of guys that have really um, made a huge impact in the uh, Middle East for Christianity. Uh, Robbie Dawkins, some of you know him, some of you have seen him. Uh, Todd White, these guys make movies. When you see what they do, it's, it's amazing. And what they're doing is they're following a call of God. But there are people, and we've heard this because we've met them and, and, and talked, and I've heard some of his messages that said, you know, there are people around us in the church that was saying, you got to slow down. You're going to, you're going to like, you're going to burn out. And, and what he was disciplined in is his identity. He was so disciplined of who God says he is and not what people say he is. And he didn't let that trip him up because people will say the darndest things to you. Don't let it trip you up. What's God calling you to in 2019? I don't know. You have to listen. You have to be aware of it. And then when he does or he starts to reveal something, there's a discipline that comes along with that. These guys are in the Middle East and there are um, Muslim people coming to faith by the thousands over there. They're setting up a school. I mean, it's just remarkable of what's happening. Look at uh, third book of John. Two verses two and three. Dear friend. Now he's writing this to a, a leader in the uh, one of the churches in uh, Western Asia. I pray that you may enjoy good health. So it, it, good health is a good thing. So let's not forget we have a gym, a gym person here nodding their head. Yeah, it's good. It is a good thing. And that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So he's saying that his, his spiritual life is doing well. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth. The truth. Telling how you continue to walk in it. See, that's the part right there is walking in the truth. There's an action step that we have to take, is walking in the truth. What's the truth? Jesus is the truth. 
He's the way, the light. You know, back in 2005, before I knew Jesus or had a relationship with Jesus, I should say, I knew who Jesus was. He was a guy that stayed in a building that I couldn't see behind a big curtain somewhere. Um, and if you were up the front, that was that meant that you were a representative of Jesus. And, and I would come in when I felt like I was doing pretty good and say hi and then go back home. That was my really my mindset of who Jesus was. Well, in 2005, um, or two, even a little bit earlier than that, I'm not sure exactly the year, but my um, my life took a major shift. I was I found myself single after a period of being married almost ten years. Uh, I actually we were together from high school and. Here, all of a sudden, your whole world just goes, and it's spun upside down. And so you, you, you sit there and scratch your head, like, okay, now what? So I'm, um, I'm single in an apartment. Like, how do you, how does this all work? <laughs> I mean, it's like hitting the reset button. You really like, and uh, one thing that I remember, and I, and it. I don't I I'm pretty sure it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me was don't go to the bar. Don't go to the bar. Go to the gym. Go to the gym. Now when I was younger I used to go to the gym faithfully, probably 5 days a week, 6 days a week faithfully. You know, when you get a job and then you have starting a family, you know, sometimes things fall off and they don't become a priority. This was a priority. This was a priority. I had to go to the gym. I had to take care of myself because I, someone very close to me <clears throat> went through a separation divorce and went to the bar. And unfortunately, they're no longer with us today with me today it's just what happens is discipline Jesus, i feel like dirt if i go to the bar that'll probably make me feel a little better no go to the gym <laughs> that's what god told me go to the gym so i started going to the gym and then he just set it up he put the people in front of me and i ended up down at the uh the vineyard church over in kingston and that was in 2005. And as soon as I said yes to Jesus, I, I mean, just everything changes. My, my thinking, everything changed. And I started to digest the word. I was reading that. Bi I read the whole Bible in, I don't know, a couple months. And I just consumed it. I don't know if I'd recommend that. You get full pretty quick. Remember how he said about the gym? You know, about uh, mixing it up a little bit? <laughs> this wasn't mixing it up. I was just force feeding myself because I was so, there was so much zeal and excitement about it. But if, you know, if I had taken my time a little bit, you know, one of the things they talk about the gym is don't go for an hour and a half. You're already setting yourself up for failure. Go for 20 minutes to a half hour. That's it. Go home. Go home. <laughs> because what will happen is you go there, you get sore, then you're like, oh, I work too hard. And then you get, then this whole mental gymnastics game starts. And before you know it, you're not going anymore. And that's what, what happened to me. I digested so much of the word. I sat in there for hours just reading the word. And then it was hard for me to get back into it. It was hard for me to get back into studying the word. You know, sometimes you take it, you can, you can read a whole book in the, in, in the Bible, but sometimes taking a little chunk and, and really chewing on that, you know, our digestive systems, just how we're actually made is with teeth to chew food. So when it goes down in our stomach, we can digest it easier. We don't just take a whole steak tip and shove it down our throat. We chew it. Well, some of us do. I don't, I'm not going to point any fingers. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, you, you kind of get, get where I'm going with that. So what is God calling you to in 2019? What's he calling for discipline in your life? To be more disciplined. To do things that will feed your soul. I don't know what that is. It's probably different for many of us in here. Galatians 5, 13 and 14. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh, to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's kind of our mission statement here. Don't indulge in the flesh. If you keep reading, he, some of the things that he's talking about is uh, sexual immorality, idolatry, fits of rage, envy, drunkenness. These are things that he's talking about. Do not indulge in the flesh. I indulged in the flesh around Christmas time. My stomach was like out to here. But there's a truth to that, that we should not be doing that. If we're following Jesus, we're called to be free, not slaves. You know, I look at that cardio is running the race. We're thinking of that correlation between the gym and our walk with, with Christ. Running the race, staying in the race, not giving up, not sitting back, staying in the race. And the weightlifting sometimes can be picking up the Bible and actually working out with it. Work out with the Bible. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and the last one, self-control. Discipline. So hopefully that's an encouragement. You guys have a lot of down faces. <laughs> but I just encourage you to ask God, what areas in my life, 2019, do I need to be more disciplined? <clears throat> Can we stand? I'm going to pray, and uh, if we could have the ministry team come down front. If any of that uh, spoke to your heart, and you would like prayer for anything about maybe being more disciplined, maybe getting to the gym, I don't know. Um, maybe you need help in that. Or just really wanting to hear God's voice. Uh, what What is 2019 What's he calling you to? Just come down front for prayer. If there's any physical needs, if you have any uh, any pains or anything like that, we believe here that God will move and heal when we ask. And he shows up. Let me pray. Father, thank you for this time and this place. Lord, we thank you for this new year. Lord, I pray that you would encourage each one of us where we are, Lord, and encourage us to go where you want us to go, in the places that you want us to go, Lord, in the call that you have for each one of us, Lord. We pray for peace in our hearts, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.